Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be evaluating a complex expression. So we're given that z plus 1 over z plus 1 equals 0 and we're supposed to evaluate z to the 8th power plus z to the 4th power plus 1. So we're going to find a numerical answer for this. Okay? So I'll be presenting two methods even though I believe there are more than two ways to do it, uh, I'm still going to stick to two methods. Okay, let me know if you know of any other method uh, to solve this problem. So let's start with the first method. So we're going to be using the given equation. Let's go ahead and clear all the fractions. Let's multiply z, uh, both sides by z. But one thing to check all the time if you're going to multiply an equation by something, always make sure that that quantity is not zero. And in this case, obviously, z cannot be 0 because we have 1 over z, which is the reciprocal. So z does not equal 0. We can multiply everything by z. That gives us z squared plus 1 plus z equals 0. I'd like to write it in standard form because it's better. z squared plus z plus 1 equals 0. So that's a polynomial, right? So for this particular values of z, we're supposed to evaluate another polynomial. And again, there's more than two ways to do it because you can go with factoring, right? Okay, great. Uh, we can briefly talk about it towards the end if I don't forget about it. So how am I going to do it with the first method? Well, since I have a quadratic equation, I can easily solve it using the quadratic formula. Completing the square is fine too, but I like the quadratic formula. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac in this case is going to give you 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. So we're going to get a square root of 3i from here, and that is divided by 2. These numbers are very special. They should remind you something at this point. But let's go ahead and make an assumption here, which is not going to hurt the answer. Suppose z is equal to negative 1 plus root 3i over 2. Equivalently, you could assume the other solution because it's not going to matter. Now, suppose z is the value given here. Let's go ahead and write this in polar form. How do we do that? We can go ahead and consider the complex plane. This is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis and our number is going to be negative one half plus root three over two. I, they should also remind you some special values. But anyways, this is what it looks like. Negative one half is going to be about this much and root three over two is going to be like that. And we're in the second quadrant because our uh, x value or uh, a value is negative and b value is positive. So consider the following triangle and you're going to notice that this is actually a 30, 60, 90 triangle and this happens to be 30 degrees. Of course this is 90 degrees so together they give us 120 degrees which can be written as 2 pi over 3 radians. So that's my theta and r would be hypotenuse and r, r in this case is actually 1 because this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle with the shorter leg being one half. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and write this in polar form using the form r e to the i theta. Since r is one, we don't need to worry about it. So our number z is actually going to be written as e to the power two pi i over three. So our angle is two pi r over three, but remember, we're supposed to multiply the theta by i in the exponent. Make sense? So that's my number. How simple, right? Now, this is z, and we're supposed to raise it to the 8th power and to the 4th power. But what you can do is do the 4th power first, and then you'll just square it. Or it doesn't matter. No big deal. Let's do the 8th power first, right? So let's go ahead and take this, and I want to raise it to the 8th power. When you raise this to the 8th power, it's so easy in uh, using Euler's formula, actually. That's going to be 16 pi i over 3, but 16 pi over 3 contains multiples of 2 pi. So we can discard them and actually we can take out a 12 pi over 3 which leaves us with e to the power 4 pi i over 3. These are different angles but when you do e to the power that uh, you'll always get the same thing. It basically corresponds to the same complex number but infinitely many forms in polar form. Anyways, that's my number, and as you know, this can be written as cosine 4 pi over 3 plus i sine pi over 3 
i sine 4 pi over 3 and it's equivalent to negative 1 minus root 3i over 2. Think about it, this is 240 degrees in the third quadrant a and b are both positive and the z to the fourth power is basically going to be this number to the fourth power. Let's go ahead and raise this number to the fourth. That's going to give us e to the power 8 pi i over 3. Again, we can take out multiples of 2 pi, which happens to be 6 pi over 3. That leaves us with e to the power 2 pi i over 3. That's kind of expected because z to the fourth is supposed to be one of the square roots of z to the eighth, right? So you could just cut this in half. Anyways, and this happens to be the original number z, which is 120 degrees or negative 1 plus root 3i over 2. Awesome. Z to the eighth and z to the fourth are ready to go. So let's go ahead and evaluate this sum. Z to the eighth is negative 1 minus root 3i. And since they have a common denominator, I can just combine them and then just add the one. You could also make a common denominator, no big deal. But notice something, these two radicals cancel out, leaving us with negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1 plus 1. And guess what? That equals 0. So the answer is 0 with the first method. This is not the end of the story because we still have the second method. Ready? Let's go. Okay. Second method is usually more elegant, but you're going to get to decide. So we are given z squared plus z plus 1 equals 0. And under those conditions, we're supposed to evaluate z to the 8th plus z to the 4th plus 1. You know the answer. Let's pretend we don't. Let's just go ahead and erase it, right? So pretend we don't know what's going to come out of this. And now work this problem with the second method. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, first of all, notice that z does not equal 1 because it's not going to satisfy. Why did I say that? You'll see in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and multiply this guy here by z minus 1 because of difference of two cubes. I hope this makes sense. When you multiply these two expressions, you get z cubed minus 1 equals 0, which means z cubed equals 1. Don't immediately say z equals 1 because z does not equal 1. So you got to note that because we're basically looking at cube roots of 1, but it's not 1. Makes sense? The other two cube roots of 1. Okay. Anyways, all you need to worry about is z cubed equals 1. And now we're supposed to evaluate z to the 8th plus z to the 4th plus 1. Now z to the 3rd can be squared. That's going to give us z to the 6th. And then multiply by z squared to get z to the 8th. Make sense? 6 plus 2 equals 8. And z to the 4th can be obtained by multiplying z cubed by z. And now we're going to use the fact that z cubed equals 1. Again, z does not equal 1, but z cubed equals 1. So that's kind of like a complex situation, right? So this is 1. This gives us z squared. This is 1. So that gives us z and plus 1. And guess what? This is the same thing as the original equation, z squared plus z plus 1, and that's equal to 0. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.